Good morning, evening, or afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So I wanted to talk about our Project 3. Um, so in the past we've done uh, something that was like how to build a house. Um, but given uh, the situation that we're all in, it's very fresh, it's very uh, in our everyday lives, um, I, I made a judgment call. Um, and so I did want to at least talk about it, because uh, as you can clearly see from the screen, um, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be working on uh, COVID-19 analysis. So the entire idea is, you know, I was thinking this through over our, our self-quarantine, and you are all uh, civil engineers, environmental engineers, you are looking to help people, right? That is uh, a lot of what you're hopefully looking to do with your careers. And one of the things that I, I imagine your department is looking for out of this class is for your ability to do uh, data analysis. You're going to be going out into the world, you're going to be planting sensors, you're going to be collecting data, and they want you to be able to code out problems uh, or code out solutions to do analysis on those problems. And so that's exactly what uh, we're going to be doing with this. Uh, so if you are unfamiliar with the John Hopkins University uh, data set, uh, they have put this wonderful uh, dashboard that I know I check a little too often. Uh, but specifically, if we think about this for a second, you know, they have this data widely available. It's it's perfectly fine to uh, collect and use. Uh, and so specifically, what we're going to be working off of is the uh, CSC, uh, CSSE uh, time series data. So this is a CSV file. The entire concept to this is all it is is just it's a file that is separated or with values on lines separated by commas. And so quite literally, if we wanted to see the uh, confirmed global uh, for every day, uh, for every country, there it is. Now, you know, GitHub uh, does some fancy uh, looking at it. So it kind of parses it and makes it look like a table. But that's, you know, we need something that we can then uh, take and load in to our uh, Python programs and that's actually where you can come to this little raw uh, button over here and voila look at all of those commas now the big thing is um, the one thing I, I will note is yes uh, this is going to be updated on a daily basis and so uh, what I've done is inside of our uh, current uh, model. I have taken a, a version of it that is only from uh, March 22nd uh, prior. So uh, if you want to confirm and you want to double check your data, make sure you're using the version that I've sent you. However, the way you can think about this is that you now can go to this data set that John Hopkins has made available to the world and you can build your own uh, little trackers. You can start to we'll work our way up to building some kind of visualization, but for at least our sake, you'll be able to uh, load in real world data, real, real world data. Uh, so just to at least kind of go through, what are you gonna be doing with this? So like I said, it looks like this, and this is uh, great for processing, but it's not really good for using in a program. And so the first process that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to load this into uh, Python uh, via the CSV Python library. So uh, make sure to read that uh, page. And you are going to need to convert that long amount of data into dictionaries. So quite literally, let's say, for example, I wanted to have an entry uh, for uh, Australia. Well, this would be what it looks like. Uh, I would have one uh, option uh, inside of Australia that is going to have states. The entire idea there is uh, certain countries do have states. You can see France does. Uh, so if they do, you have to tell, say that this is true. Then list out all of the state names. Uh, then for each one of those states, as you can, you know, this is France, but uh, for each one of those states, 
they should have a list with the the day-to-day -day, uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19. Now, there are some states that don't have that. So, say, for example, Angola. Angola does not have any states. So, uh, what do we do there? Uh, you can see that there are blanks. And if you've seen this one, there are blanks. You know, there's Angola right there. So, what do I do? In that case, when you find those situations, the state name is just going to be Angola. Uh, so, it can stay blank. From there, you're going to do effectively two programs. You're going to make a massive program where you are asking the user to uh, select an option. Either get the latest confirmed from a country uh, or get a timeline of their data. Uh, so the entire uh, flowchart is kind of broken down. This should help you at least build your main program. And as you can see, you're going to be required to build uh, four library, uh, four functions: a main function, a load data set function. This is what will be doing the uh, processing uh, of the file into a dictionary. Uh, the get latest confirmed, where you're going to pass it that data set, uh, pass it a country's name, and potentially a state. Now I say potentially, and you notice I say state equal none here. What we're doing with this is we're actually giving it a default parameter. The entire idea here is now I could do, say for example, get Australia, uh, get dataset Australia Victoria. So I've said the dataset, the uh, country, and the state. But again, there are some countries that do not have that. And in that case, get dataset Angola. Now all I have to do is say Angola, and I can cut sort of, well, cut the, the, uh, the function, so I'm only passing it two parameters instead of the full three. And so the same thing will happen with your fourth function, get timeline. Uh, same kind of concept, what you should be returning is a function, or sorry, a list of numerical numbers uh, for uh, that in particular region, country, state, etc. You will need to go through and build some tests. Uh, you are going to be required, where are they? You are required to develop 10 test cases uh, based off of at least five countries. So pick five other countries in the world that I have not used uh, in this uh, example. And three of those must have states. So I am gonna make you do both of them. Uh, from there, uh, you can Continue to test them and make sure that you are you know, confirming what you see. That's about it. So with that, again, as always, uh, if you have questions, make sure to post them. Uh, and with that, let's get into lecture one.